The culprit behind the Wongai Falls croc attack, at large no more. Captured, euthanised and brought here to Roger Matthews' workshop. It's a process seen as a necessity. Any animal this size or any animal that goes and attacks someone in a national park is not really good for business, so it's got to be removed straight away. Tourism operators agree crocs in popular swimming spots is not a good look. People look at it in a negative way and, of course, Obviously, they don't want to go on a tour where there's a possibility they can be, be killed by an estuarine crocodile. The attack serves as an important reminder to remain vigilant, even during the dry season. This can happen, OK, and it's just a really, really sad, unfortunate incident that it did, especially in our busy uh, tourism season. You, you take your life in your own hands if you swim in a creek or a waterway that's not patrolled. Um, where this fella did bite some and it is patrolled and it is trapped and it shows things can get in. While people in the sector say the rangers do a great job, it might be time to look into more safety measures. We have technology at our hands today, 24-hour ca camera surveillance, netting systems, all this to reduce that risk. This is the unfortunate fate of all crocs found in tourist spots in the Northern Territory. But Roger and his team here make sure their deaths aren't in vain. We try and utilise every part of the animal, you know, so avoid any wastage. Skins are sold for handbags or belts, flesh becomes pet food, and even the fat can be turned into soap. The attack victim, who's in a stable condition in hospital, left with a great story to tell. Yeah, if the poor fella's interested, we'll do the skull up and we'll gift it to him. <laughs> you know, have a good, bit of a memento of the Northern Territory experience. An experience he's not likely to forget. Isabella Tolhurst, ABC News, Darwin.